Hello and welcome to the Bane Picks video for the Dallas Cowboys and San Francisco 49ers for this final divisional round game. I'm your host, Matthew Model for Lamps.com, joined here by Jacob Blaine and Anthony Elio. We have a four-point spread in favor of the home San Francisco 49ers, an over-under of 46, and a money line of minus 200. And unfortunately for me, the Minnesota Vikings are not the team uh, taking on the 49ers this week. That's uh, what I was expecting, but... You learn to not expect things as a Viking fan. Um, and instead, we get Dak Prescott, who I'm glad I didn't do videos last week because I was on a little bit of a vacation because I definitely would have said that Dak was going to not play that well, that maybe the Bucks were going to surprise, and boy, was I wrong. Anthony, how are you feeling about that kind of momentum coming into this game? Dallas looked, I mean, probably the best they've looked all season last week. Granted, maybe that Bucks team is not very good. It isn't very good. Their coaching staff is all out. But that, the team has talent. They looked great. They're taking on a Super Bowl favor in the 49ers. How do you, how do you think it's going to play out? I think it's a little bit overhyped. Um, this number seems pretty low to me, to be honest. Um, yes, they played very well on Monday night, but it's a little bit of an overreaction to them beating a team with no offensive line and an AARP member at quarterback right now. Dak looks pretty good, but we're talking about him facing a middle-of-the-road defense as opposed to the number one defense in football right now. It's going to be quite a bit of a drop-off. He was clean, he threw no, no picks, and he looked good, but San Fran is totally different. And also on offense, I think that San Fran is in a good place to outpace them. You know, Brock Purdy has been playing great football. And it's weird that no reporters so far are bringing up that he was the last pick in the draft. It's a little bit strange to me. But he's been fantastic. He's outshone every single other rookie quarterback. He's thrown for at least two scores in every start so far. And I think he's only gone under a QBR of 100 so far. They've been my Super Bowl pick since the beginning of the year. And frankly, they've looked better with Purdy than with Lance or Garoppolo down the stretch. Um, I'm totally fine with laying the four. I'm actually kind of shocked this didn't start climbing up already. I like it. I really like it. By the way, Anthony, as someone from the Bay Area, people hate when you say San Fran, but feel free to keep saying it because I don't really care what other people say. SF, the Bay, do they prefer that? They, I mean, people here prefer the city, but obviously as a national broadcast on YouTube, I don't think people <laughs> will necessarily agree with just calling it the city. San Francisco, the 49ers, I, it's weird. Anthony's, like, I came into this game a little timid, but you kind of you kind of got me riled up. I kind of want to just go place three units on the 49ers now. Jacob, are you going to talk me down back to earth, or how are you feeling about the game? Yeah, uh, I'm on the other side. I like the Cowboys here getting the points um, for a few reasons. But I'm going to start with this. And the 49ers have faced two teams with a positive point differential this season. The Chiefs, who are plus 127, and the Seahawks, who are plus six, they play the Seahawks twice. Every other team they played this year finished with a negative point differential. Cowboys had a point differential of 125 in the regular season. Um, in this run, this 11-game win streak that the Niners have had, which has been very impressive, um, they really haven't faced any talented quarterbacks. Well, not any, but they haven't faced a, a gauntlet of talented quarterbacks. They faced Matthew Stafford, Justin Herbert, who was without a couple of players on the offensive line and the receiving core. Colt McCoy, Andy Dalton, Tom Brady, Geno Smith twice, Taylor Heineke, Jarrett Stidham, and David Blau. The average of those quarterbacks, 23rd in EPA plus CPOE. And if you take away turnovers, which obviously turnovers have been a part of the story for Dak Prescott this year, he's fourth in EPA plus CPOE. And honestly, I think I was clouded by the last couple of weeks for the Cowboys here where they looked pretty rough to close the season. But honestly, I think that created value on them. Against the Bucks, and you know, I, I bet on the Bucks in that matchup, and I, I was dead wrong. Um, but I don't think it was just the Bucks being bad. I think the Cowboys were incredibly well prepared and played very well in that, and their defense really showed up. Um, this is going to be the best defense that Brock Purdy has faced. The average defense that he's faced in his um, is it now seven starts is 20th in DVOE and 20th in EPA. He's faced one defense that's top 10 in either of those metrics, and it was Washington. And in that game, they were able to get, the commanders were able to get pressure on him, and he was really poor against that pass rush. Um, you know, I, I think um, it was a really small sample size, so we're we're not going to overplay that too much. But the Cowboys led the NFL with a forty three percent pressure rate, and um, when Purdy was under pressure, he ranked twenty ninth out of thirty nine quarterbacks in the EPA. 
Um, this 49ers offensive line really hasn't been that great. Uh, they have a lot of 32% pressure rate, ranked 19th, um, with Purdy under pressure. And yeah, I think the Cowboys are going to make him make complicated throws a lot more than most of these defenses that they face this year. And then you look at the Niners defense, and I think they're more vulnerable, particularly on the back end, which we saw last week with Geno Smith and DK Metcalf really having success. I think they're more, more vulnerable than people give them credit for. Um, most notably, they they play this zone no blitz defense where it's heavily reliant on Fred Warner uh, dropping deep into coverage and allowing the safeties to shade over to the boundaries and help the corners on the edges. But the issue with that is it often um, can be beat by play action. And I think that's where you're going to see the Cowboys have success is play action and passing over the middle of the field. The Niners have struggled cro- covering the slot and crossing routes at times, which CeeDee Lamb, I think, can really be have successful in that area. And Dalton Schultz, I think should also be successful in this game. So the 49ers offense is loaded. Tons of skill position talent. Kyle Shanahan's done an awesome job with this team. And, you know, this run is really impressive with a seventh-round rookie quarterback who, I mean, I, I still don't think is, is any good. But this is a complete step up in class based on what they've seen recently. And, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if the Cowboys win this game outright. I do think it's going to be a field goal game. So getting over the three-and-a-half, you can get three-and-a-half, four right now with the Cowboys, I think is a value in this game. Sorry for the quick pause there. Uh, my question to you, Jacob, is I I feel like you, your comments about the 49ers, they, while, while valid, why does that not also just apply to the Cowboys? Like, I feel like the times that they've seen success, it's not been against the greatest competition. They lost, I mean, they did beat Tampa Bay uh, last week, but... They started out the year losing in Tampa Bay, and then you look towards the end of the year. Yeah, they were able to outscore Philadelphia, but they gave up 34 to a Gardner Minshew led team that honestly I felt like Minshew kind of didn't even play that well that game. Lost they they blew that Jacksonville game. Tennessee game, Tennessee looked horrible, and honestly, they didn't look that impressive. We're gonna throw out Washington because it didn't matter at the end of the season. I, I just I don't think the Cowboys have been impressive either. I, I think anything you can say there about the strength of schedule, like can kind of just apply it to Dallas as well, especially when you take in context when they were facing teams. Um, and it, it kind of applies as well. I I mean, Anthony got me kind of riled up. I don't think I can bet the 49ers at minus four. Um, I don't necessarily even disagree with you, Jacob. I just, I don't know if I truly believe that the San Francisco's had a cakewalk and they only look good because of their schedule. I know you're not completely saying that, but I feel like it, it somewhat applies to Dallas as well. I do think this game, if it was at minus three or anything lower, it would be on the 49ers. But at four, it's kind of a dead number. I'm just kind of looking at the total under for the game. Um, and where I do agree with you, Jacob, is I don't think Brock Purdy is like the end all be all of quarterbacks. I do think he is going to see struggle a little bit. And where I agree with you, Anthony, is I do think the 49ers defense is the best in the league. And I don't think Dal- or Dak Prescott's for real what we saw last week. And I think he's going to come back down to earth and more um in this game and when it's all said and done I think it's going to be rather low scoring the one place where I see Dallas seeing some success is I think gain Tony Pollard the ball in space the ball through the year I do think is going to cause the 49ers a little bit of trouble despite having a really good linebacking core I felt like we kind of saw it with Austin Eckler in the Chargers game where Tony Pollard's that kind of player where he's very creative if you're able to get him the ball in any kind of space he's just been electric um, and on the 49 ers side, where I think they see some success on offense, is going to be getting the ball really to Kittle over the middle of the field quickly. Um, and the same thing, I, I, I just trust Kyle Shanahan to get the ball in space to Debo and Ayuk. But it's going to be small chunk plays, and I think both pass rushes get to the quarterback. And I'm, I'm predicting kind of like a 24-17 game at, at the most, and I feel pretty comfortable taking under 46. So no pick for me. On the spread, um, honestly, even though I think the 49ers definitely come away with the victory, I don't hate the Cowboys as, as a teaser option, getting them the plus 10. I feel like that's really nice because it's a nice key number. We talked about, you're probably watching this video too late, but we talked about teasing the Chiefs down, teasing the Eagles down, and honestly, if you threw the Cowboys in there as a separate part at plus 10, I, I wouldn't hate it either. So that's where I'm at. Anthony, or Jacob unmuted which means I'm about to get some knowledge dropped on me. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I just wanted to clarify. Um, 
I do think this Niners team is very talented. There's a reason I bet on them to win the Super Bowl, like, a month, yeah. a month and a half ago. Um, I think when you look at just in terms of blue-chip talent, I think this team has the most blue-chip talent in the league, um, particularly in the skill position spots on offense. But I think the Cowboys are in a position where they can take advantage of where they do have weaknesses, which is I think Brock Purdy hasn't been tested in a way that the Cowboys are going to test him in this game. Yeah. And I'm curious to see, like, when his confidence is shook in this game. Because I think it will be. I think he will be sacked. He might even throw an interception, which may be one of these passes that he throws that are extremely dangerous and don't get picked off. Maybe they finally will be picked off by the Dallas defense. But when his confidence is shook, how does he respond? And I'm banking on Dak Prescott taking advantage of a secondary that I think has more weaknesses than people expect. Um more so than I am Brock Purdy against this pass rush. And, you know, ultimately, I think the, the skill position talent and the coaching of Kyle Shanahan might be enough for a win. And as somebody with Super Bowl future money, like, I'm hoping that's the case. But I think the Cowboys hang around. And I, I think the most likely outcome is the 49ers win by three. But wouldn't be shocked if the Cowboys win this game outright. All right. Well, Anthony, then my question to you is, A, do you want to rebuttal Jacob? And then, B, if you got any other bets, let us know. Uh, a no, because my brain was already focused on the next bet. I didn't, I wasn't in rebuttal mode. Um, I, I'll do it in a separate video that I'll post to my own channel. Um, but B, my other bet that I'm liking, I am liking San Fran or the city to go over 24 and a half points in this game. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, Dallas has had some rough games down the stretch. I actually think they're a pretty overrated defense heading into the playoffs. They've allowed over 24 and a half points too. The Jaguars, the Chicago Bears with Justin Fields in, the Eagles with Gardner Minshew in, and the Commanders with Sam Howell in. I know that last one was a little bit more meaningless than the rest of them, but it still goes to show that they are, you know, not this brick wall defense that, you know, they were a little bit earlier in the season. And the 49ers, on the other hand, have really gotten into a groove, averaging 38 points over these last four games. There's a lot of momentum, and they do have a little bit of extra rest over Dallas heading into here. A lot of people do, a lot of bettors are kind of, you know, going more towards the under or fading San Fran because they, you know, they think Purdy is just like due. Not so much in the way that like Jacob was talking that, you know, if he is, you know, faced with a tough situation, how he's going to like respond. Um, but some bettors seem to think that he's just due for a bad game. I'm not going to bet against it until I see it. I'm like an over 24 and a half in this one. All right. So Anthony and I somewhat going head to head on this one is. I have the total under at 46, but there is a world where we both can make money off our bets, um, but that would mean that the, the 49ers are definitely uh, probably covering. It's Jacob, a beautiful world, Matt. Yeah, I, I like that one. Unless we get a... No, we can't even get like a 25-20. Well, one of us has to lose out of the three of us. Um, Jacob, how about you? Um, yeah, I lean the under, but I'm not going to play it just because... Really wouldn't shock me if either one of these teams scores a defensive touchdown in this game. And, you know, that, that can that can hurt your under pretty quickly. Um, certainly both of these teams are very capable of forcing turnovers. And both of these quarterbacks are very capable of turning the ball over. So you could have some short fields, some defensive scores. Like, that sort of stuff really hurts your under play. Um, I lean that way, though. Uh, but overall, yeah, I, I just think the best value from a spread perspective is on the Cowboys, yeah. All right. So going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you want to check out the player prop version of this video, it's currently up on the channel where we talk our favorite player props. But comment down below your favorite bets. Hit the like button if you like this video. Dislike if you didn't. Hit subscribe if you want to see more NFL playoff content. And we'll see you for the next one very soon.